Games Workshop have just announced something so incredibly new, so exciting, that I have literally stepped off a plane, arrived in Ireland, and I am now making this video right now. Yes, I look like a mess, but that doesn't matter, because there is a thing that we need to talk about. So Warhammer Community just put out a post today, and it is called, The Next Evolution of Citadel Color Paint is Coming. Oh, woo! And the reason why I'm so excited about this is because the last time we heard something like this was when Contrast Paint came out. You know, just the best thing the Games Workshop have made in like the last five years? This absolutely revolutionized painting brought in tons of new techniques. It brought painting to the masses and got me to paint a ton more miniatures at least because I no longer needed to paint multiple layers, I could just put it all on one big thick coat. Honestly, it can't be overstated how big contrast painting was to the hobby. Though I know that there's gonna be lots of people in the audience who are really upset at me for saying that, but don't worry guys, we're gonna circle back around to those statements. But first, let's talk about this. So Games Workshop themselves are really bigging this up and they have created an inference that this is going to be as big as contrast paints. It's not just me saying this here. In fact, they actually say in the article itself, the last time we saw this much excitement at the paint labs, we ended up with the spectacular contrast range. Yeah. So this isn't something small. This is going to be a huge announcement. It is going to be another cornerstone of Citadel paints, just like contrast paints were. But what then is it? What could it be? Well, Games Work haven't said, kind of. I think they have. In fact, I think I know exactly what it is the Games Workshop are talking about here, with almost 100% certainty too. But before I say what I think it is, let's talk about what it could be. So, it could be color shift paint. This is actually paint that changes color depending on the light reflecting on it. It's really, really cool. It's very interesting. I actually own some paints like this. I bought some from Turbo Dork at UKGE this year. They have some really cool paint names, I gotta say. But there's plenty of other manufacturers of this out there as well. And they do definitely have a massive wow factor, and they look really cool. But Turbo Dark aren't the only ones making this kind of paint. There are plenty of other manufacturers of it out there as well. So this could be Games Workshop kind of joining the pack a little. And you might be thinking, well, that's not really that comparable to contrast paint, because contrast paint was this huge, this delightful new thing, this paradigm shift. That it was invented by Games Workshop, that no one else was doing it. But that's not quite true. <laughs> Contrast paints have actually been around for years and years, way before Games Workshop started selling it. There was a company in 2012 who I cannot remember the name of right off the top of my head right now, but they sold a very similar product to Contrast Paint. It just never took off, and I think they just went bankrupt. In comparison, Contrast Paints were really well marketed by Games Workshop. They really pushed Contrast Paint, and it ended up performing really well as a result. There's loads of people who just paint with... Contrast paint. That's it. That's all they paint with. So not bad, especially considering the fact that Games Workshop sell contrast paint for a little bit of a premium. So what does this mean? Well, the Games Workshop are not above taking pre-existing ideas that already exist in the marketplace and just kind of repackaging them, repurposing them, and selling them again. You could say that they just slap chop a new name onto an old thing and sexy it up a little. Which isn't necessarily bad, it wasn't until Citadel Contrast that I really found out about contrasts. And on that note, could this change be the thing that is most requested of Citadel paints? You know what I'm gonna say, this is the thing that everybody wants. Could it be dropper bottles? <sighs> Will people no longer be forced to purchase dozens of tiny pipettes so that they can transfer paint from Citadel pot to little dropper bottle? I mean, dropper bottles are inherently superior. And as much as I would like this to be the case, I don't think it is. It just doesn't feel like the sort of thing the Games Workshop would really make such a big fuss about. And I don't think they should either. Ultimately, it's just an added convenience. Plus, Games Workshop sort of wants you to spill that null noil, right? Because then you gotta buy more null noil. So, I don't think it's dropper bottles. So, what else could it be then? 
Probably not gonna be inks, that's basically contrast paint. Could it be glow-in-the-dark paint? Eh, not really revolutionary. I think they've done some of that before already. Could it be a renaming of all the paints? Probably not. Bring back Midnight Blue. Could it be dippable paint, like Army Paint Quick Shades? <laughs> I think that would be a lot of fun, but I don't think it will be. Based on what we know so far, I don't think it's gonna be any of that stuff. Instead, I think it's going to be paint that does not require primer. That's right, paint you just take from the bottle and slap it straight onto the model. That's it. That's all you need to do. No priming. Mmm. Oh yeah. And I think this partly because of the trailer that they released. I think they sort of give the game away a little bit. You can see in the trailer itself that paint is just being applied directly to an unprimed model. But it makes total sense to me, and it's a great idea. I mean, anyone who has spent time in mini painting communities and has been met with new people, I'm sure you have seen one or two pictures of models that are halfway painted, and you can tell that they're being painted directly on to an unprimed model. Ah, uh, yeah, that's kind of tough. <laughs> But it would be incredible if people could do that, if they could just assemble a model and then apply the paint directly on immediately, straight away. And I guess more importantly, I think that it would be an incredibly astute business move from Games Workshop. And the reason why is really simple. It's because it gets casuals to paint models, just like Contrast Paint did. And Contrast Paint was massively successful. Painting models has always had a huge barrier to entry. And if your business relies on kids painting dozens and dozens of spacemen, well, anything that can make that painting faster, easier, and less arduous, the better. Especially if you can sell it for more than just standard paint. And sure, there's a wow factor for things like two-tone paints with casuals. Like, they look really impressive and they're very cool. But I just think that the application of primerless paints would be far more expensive and would have much more of an impact on the hobby. And just think of how accessible it would make painting. So for example, you could stick primerless paints inside one of those build and paint starter boxes. You know the ones you get like three models, either Necrons or Space Marines, you get a couple of paints and you get a brush. Designed to be easy to start with, marketed to kids, get them inside the hobby. And the models inside this box, you don't need clippers or glue for them. They're push fit models. So the only thing you're missing to get started with this box is primer. So what do you do? You get rid of primer. You get rid of the need for primer, at least for beginners. I mean, this would just be the paint equivalent of push fit models. And really, I have to say, primer f sucks. I actually hate primer. I would love to not ever need to use it ever again. Let me tell you, folk, in Ireland, it is windy, it is cold, it is miserable. It is awkward to prime stuff. I do not want to go outside. Do not make me go outdoors. You are literally fighting the weather over here if you want to prime models, even at the best of times. And in other places where it's too hot, primer settles weirdly on the models and kind of comes out all looking all weird. I mean, I know people that literally wait until certain times of the year to prime models. Like, they will not prime models outside of these specific times of the year. That's crazy. And that's not what Games Workshop want either. They want you to be painting throughout the entire year. They want you buying more paints throughout the entire year. And if you live in an apartment, forget about it. How are you gonna prime your models? You gonna hold them outside the window and try and spray them like that? Or are you gonna go outside into the street? Are you gonna prime your models in the street? People will look at you. They'll think you're odd. And if you're playing Warhammer, you probably are. <laughs> And let me tell you, I have accidentally spray primer indoors and it really sucks. I do not recommend it. It is very toxic and very dangerous. And it really is tough to get rid of. The stains. The stains. This house has been stained. And look, primers are toxic. They get you high and they are dangerous. They're not good for lungs and they're not family friendly either. I mean, as a product, they are legislated for. Primers contain controlled substances. You can't sell them to minors, and there's weird legislation around them too. For example, for loads of months last year, I couldn't buy primers. Nowhere in Northern Ireland could sell primers at all. 
I couldn't get them online. Literally, Amazon would decline to deliver them to anywhere in Northern Ireland. Not even hobby shops would sell primer to us in Northern Ireland. They couldn't get through customs. Even the local Warhammer store sold out of primer and couldn't get any more in. We literally, there was, there was months where we just couldn't buy primer. And I was genuinely concerned. I didn't know how the hell I was gonna paint models. There were models that I needed to undercoat. I needed to prime them. Uh, now, luckily that did get resolved. Somehow they just started selling them again. I don't know, probably protocols, Brexit stuff, the trade was going on, I don't know. But it shows that as a hobby product, it comes with a lot of complications. It's not like everything else that is sold. It is kind of unique. And as a product, I bet that it loses sales. 100%. I bet that there are parents that walk into Warhammer, they're going to buy the models, they're going to buy some of the paints for their kid, and then they hear about priming. And I bet they get immediately suspicious. Painting is one thing, paint is actually really safe, but primer is kind of adult. It requires supervision. You cannot sell it to minors. I knew that I couldn't buy it as a kid and my parents weren't going to, so what I had to do was rely on a friend who kind of looked like he was 18. He was the one who had to go and buy primer from the Warhammer store. And, I, and this is something I think that adult hobbyists forget. In order to play Warhammer, I had to illegally purchase Primer. That's not a situation that Games Workshop really want to find themselves in. So ultimately, from a business perspective, Primer is kind of like a useless appendage on the side of a body. Of course, GW, as a business, want to cut it off. So I think they will. <laughs> Honestly, I think they've probably been working over the last couple of years on a paint that does not need to be applied onto primer. A paint that will not peel off plastic models. I think that this is going to be primerless paints. TM. I'm TMing it right now. I've copyrighted the Games Workshop. I want my royalties. And honestly, I feel like if it's not this now, now that I've big this all up in my mind, I think I'm gonna be really disappointed. And, and don't get me wrong, there is obviously space for primer in the hobby. Like, you need them for contrast paints. It just the high contrast paint work. You need primer. Like, it's never going to go away, but I do feel like there's room for paints that don't require primer to be applied, even if they are going to be sold at a bit of a premium. But hey, that's just a theory, a paint theory. And if you did enjoy this discussion on paints, why not check out my video on why everyone in the entire world is painting wrong. Yes, even you. This is gonna blow your mind. Check it out here. And a huge thanks to Steven Jackson, Earthwormia, and Sonic Bread. I could not create this content without you guys. And a big thanks to all of my patrons. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, it's like 2am now, so I'm gonna go to bed. Bye bye